because I just I don't enjoy looking at the snow in this one either. Um, it is a little bit. Oh, what? It didn't work. No, it was all for nothing. I installed no snow, and it's the still snow. Crap. Um. All right. Well, we're gonna have to just go through this with snow then. Um. Apology. I. I don't know, man. I. I I'm not sure why. It's. It's. Oh, it's so so bright. But you guys prefer snow anyway, it seems, looking by the chat. So, all right, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Um, welcome, everybody, to game number four between Brazil A and Brazil B. Brazil B are about to take it if they can win this game. They're one game from a victory. Of course, just because it is 3-0 doesn't mean that it will be 4-0 at the end of this game. Bear in mind that yesterday we saw Finland A versus China Frantic, and we saw Finland A going up 3-0, and then China Frantic bringing it back 3-3 before Finland were able to close out the series. So there's absolutely every opportunity for Brazil A to come back, and what better opportunity to do it than on their home map now. Brazil A get to choose this map. They've chosen Ghost Lake, and I... I'm not sure if I like the snow or not. It's, it might be too bright, and I might want to disable it. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna power through. Lower the brightness on your monitor if you must. But we're powering through. No time to restart this one now. The game has already begun, and I tried to install the no snow patch. It didn't work, and we're just gonna have to deal with the consequences, which may never be the same, because your retinas may be burned. And your vision may be blurry for the rest of your life. But such is the commitment to AOC. Such is the love for this game that we will do what we must do. So anyway, uh, yes, yeah, sunglasses also work as well. If you do require uh, a bit of a, you know, something to take the edge off, sunglasses can also do the trick. So Brazil A have absolutely everything on the line right now. Let's see where they're at. To the north of the map, on the flank... We have Alive playing in the green as the Mayans. In the pocket, Riot in the orange playing as the Mongols. In the second pocket, Goku playing as the Huns in the gray. And down to the southeast in the blue fire playing as the Spanish. And once again, they get fire on that flank as the Spanish. And this is the same as game number one in the Arabia match where fire was again on that flank as the Spanish. And it went horribly, horribly wrong. This time around, he's against Stark and not VH. Stark is going to be the flank for the Brazil B team at the south. He's playing as the Spanish as well. So it's going to be a little bit of Spanish on Spanish action down here. Hopefully, one player will come supreme. In the pocket position, VH in the yellow, playing as the Chinese. Good, po uh, good pocket sieve here. In the red, we've got Miguel playing as the Huns. And at the north of the map, Dugao. In the purple, playing as the Mongols. So it's mirrored sieves for both... No, it's not mirrored sieves for both teams. My bad. I apologize. It is China. Chinese for Brazil B and Mayans for Brazil A. Both teams have the Mongols, the Spanish, and the Huns. Brazil B have the Chinese. Brazil A have the Mayans. That's the big difference right there. At the top side, it's going to be Mongols versus Mayans. We're going to see Alive coming out with a Drush. The Mongol player already up to the Feudal Age. Going to be looking for the fast scouts. The Drush from Alive needs to be quick. Otherwise, the scouts from Dugao will already be on the field. And that Drush may not be able to achieve too much. And uh, <laughs> you guys, such memers. <laughs> this is nice though. Look at this fire here, putting some palisades up on this stone. He's not built them, but the palisades provide vision. Oh god, when you put the fog of war on, doesn't it just go like the snow goes really weird? Um if anything if any units from Stark start taking stone, he's gonna know. And that's really important information because Spanish can do a bit of a tower rush. He will, however, spot the villagers coming over with his scout here. Ah, and I'm blind again. Um, Stark running over with five vills and a militia. Looks like Stark wants to get aggressive. 
Maybe he's on the stone somewhere else. I don't think he is, though. Oh, hello. Is he coming to grab the stone down here? That's a really far away uh, stone mine, but it might be a good idea. It wouldn't be obvious. Might blindside fire a little bit, but then again, fire knows this is coming. He um, sees that his scout is now dead, and he sees that this is a bad thing. He quickly tries to wall up, but the villager bumping... Oh my god, villagers bumping and grinding on each other right here. This is like a sweaty nightclub. Fire can't build this wall fast enough because the villagers just can't stop bumming each other. And um, right now, forcing a tower from fire, that outpost, jabated, uh, going to actually put the tower on the wood line over here instead. So the tower from fire, a quick reaction to seeing a tower looking building from Stark ends up being an outpost. Obviously, that tower is not so bad because the gold will be at least covered by that tower. But this tower is going to cover the gold too. So, fire. Get your jabatos in the chat because that was a good jabate from him. Giving him the vision as well from the outpost. Very valuable. Fire's going to delete the mining camp in frustration. No, not in frustration. Uh, because he wants to build it on this side now. Or this side. So, his villagers stay away from the tower. Stay away. He says, Riot coming in with some uh, scouts from the pocket position, doing a Mongol scout rush, not uncommon. And he might just clean this up. Uh oh, Stark. What? He can hop into his tower. I thought the tower was walled. That must be a hole. Hey, there's always a hole. Stark gonna jump inside. Riot gonna have to back away a little bit. The scouts from Fiage coming over now. Pocket player. Scout rushing, as you do. And on the north side, Men at Arms from Alive coming in. Four Men at Arms. It's a big commitment to Men at Arms, considering that Dugao actually went straight into archers instead of a stable, countering the Men at Arms nicely and being able to defend comfortably. Stark will actually end up going for the stone here. Going to be found by Riot. I'm squinting right now. I, th I think I do need to go and get my, uh, my sunglasses. Not even kidding. Um, but yeah, Stark... Gonna lose two bills. Painful stuff. Inflicting minimal damage onto Fire. Of course, he does push him off of wood down here. And he does have an entry into the back of Fire's base where he can look to find some more. He's got some men at arms here as well to try and harass the villagers in the wood line. In fact, he's found a lone villager to the north, I think. She's running away. In comes Fiage to try and help his flank player, Stark. And Castle Age is coming in for the other two pockets. Miguel's Huns. Goku's Huns, both up to the castle age, within a few seconds of each other here. And um, obviously that's going to be a night rush from both of those players. But with Fiage and um, Riot both going for scouts here, that's going to delay their castle age a bit. And so we're only going to have one player making knights, and now they've got to decide where do those knights go. Who gets the knights? Do they use them defensively to help? Or do they use them aggressively to harass? We'll see. Obviously, uh, that's up to Goku and, and Miguel right here. Miguel might feel the need to chase down the men-at-arms and then go and hit the flank. He might feel the need that actually my teammates need help on the right flank. I need to go and defend. That's going to be an important decision because that can change a lot over the next few minutes of the game depending on how the next few engagements go once those knight first knights come out onto the field. It's going to be very powerful at this point when you have knights and everybody else is fielding armies of weak archers, a couple of men-at-arms. It's obviously a powerful pi uh, power spike for the, the knight players. Castle Age in for Goku, the grey player. Two knights coming out. Miguel, the same. We'll see what he does with these, and looks like those men at arms for Stark did get cleaned up in the end, and able to do any more damage to fire there. But Fiage will try. Fiage will come and get some pot shots in, see if he can find some vills. Why not? Villager trailer at the moment is actually Stark, um, and Goku's not got many vills either. Um, actually, then again, neither does Miguel. I mean, obviously, both of the players who fast castled won't have as many vills. Obviously, those players had more time spent at their TC doing the upgrade to the Castle Age than they had making Vils. So it's still enough to get three knights outstruck very quickly. 
and where are those knights going to go? It looks like the knights are being used defensively here. Dugao coming in to Riot's pocket position, pushing him off of gold. Riot's actually up to the castle age now. And not ideal for Riot to be pushed off of gold at all. He's going to build a stable and a house here to wall Dugao out as Goku's knights come in to close the gap and kill those archers off. Miguel coming in as well though, but now it's Brazil B. Once again, Brazil B, who are the more aggressive team. We see this repeatedly. Goku's having to come back, use his knights defensively to clean up Dugao. Whereas Miguel's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go straight over the map. I can send my knights forward. I can get aggressive with them. And he's going to do just that. Now, Fire's roaming around the south side, looking at Stark here. And Stark has no protection on his stone. Sorry, on his gold. He does have a tower on his stone, though, so we should see a tower coming up on the gold as well fairly soon. But yes, um, he actually is taking gold out here. So maybe he doesn't even need his, stone, uh, his gold at home. He is actually stealing the gold of Fire between his two towers. That's pretty neat, isn't it? Just walled himself in and starts taking the gold. What's Fire going to do? He doesn't even know about it. It's being stolen from right under his nose. So, uh, Riot's safe for now. Riot's now castle. Fiege is about to be castle. Fiege on one stable. And Riot on one stable as well. So, it's funny really how both Fiege and Riot are mirroring each other here. Considering that Fiege is the Chinese and obviously Riot is the, the Mongols in this situation. Um, the big difference, of course, being that Fiege is the Chinese, so he's got more villas. He's got 36 villagers compared to Riot right now. Uh, so it's a six villager difference, but yeah, it's going to be more like five villas by the time Fiege hits castle and Riot is able to uh, keep making more villas. Although Riot did just do Town Watch, which is not ideal either. He, he, oh, well, it's a really valuable tech. It's really useful, but obviously you want to try and avoid it as long as you can. It's 100 food, it wastes your village, uh, your TC time, and, you know, it's 100 food you could be using to make knights, to make more bills. But it does offer that extra line of sight, which can be really valuable. Actually, Riot did add a second stable, I didn't see that. But VH coming in with plus two defense for his knights. Probably going to be using them a little more defensively, because he needs to help Stark. Stark's not having the best time, but he's still got more villas than, uh, than Fire, and he's still got more villas than Riot as well, so he's doing okay. And now, uh-oh, Goku's in here, Miguel's in here, Knight's pushing Riot away and killing three villas, he can't make his second TC. His third TC will go up on the gold safely, but he's forced now to make camels. And I've said before in the last games how you don't want to have to make camels. Counter-attacking with camels doesn't work. You can't go and raid villas with camels. It's purely a defensive unit in AOC, at least. At the same time, Alive here having to deal with more raids. Uh, sorry, Dugao having to deal with raids from Alive, even. Dugao is, uh, yeah, actually not having a good time. He's... Uh, Second lowest village account right now after after Riot, but he is on the flank, so it's kind of expected, you could say. But he is also the Mongol player. He's also going to have a lot riding on him this game if he can get the uh, the momentum going later on with the Magadai. But we saw in the first game, you know, the Arabia game is quite reminiscent of that. The Brazilian B team they had Dugao on the flank as the Mongols, and Dugao never actually um, sort of got his Magadai at all before they'd won the game. The other three players had won the game anyway at that point. So although Dugao can be very instrumental in the late game, although Dugao is a very key player in this match, the other players are still doing a great job once again, much like we saw in the first Arabia match. And, um, you know, Dugao might never even have to step up to the plate here in this one. So the game is... Currently paused. Don't worry, it's not frozen, it's not broken. We're currently just waiting for that pause to end here. And I want to make sure that Vubli's not crashed in the meantime, because Vubli has been crashing on me a little bit. But I think it's okay. I think it's yeah, I think it's alright. Cool. So um 
yeah, waiting for that pause to, to or the unpause to come in. Um, right now, Village Account's looking very good for Goku, but the rest of his team are looking a bit shaky. 36, 36, 38 vils for the rest of Brazil A, while Goku's on 56. On the other side of the map, you've got Miguel on 40, uh, 59, um, Villager leader in the game. You've got Fiege on 53. Uh, sorry, what? Sorry, you've got 53 for Miguel. My bad, I'm looking at the wrong numbers here. Uh, 43 for Fiege, 39 for Start. They're kind of ahead across the board there. But it's a close one. It's, it's small margins at this stage of the game. Hmm. I am going to check the lobby, though, just to make sure I'm not the only one who's paused. Yeah, Vubli's not crashed, so it's okay. We're just waiting for the game to resume. Cool. It's all good. It's all good. There we go. Resuming now. Cool stuff. So, uh, I don't know. It's fairly close still. There's not really any huge margins at this stage. Fiege, though, has the best upgrades, I believe, on his knights. He was the only player to go for plus two defense. And looking to get aggressive onto fire here. Coming around the back with some. Coming around the right side with some. Stark going to put up his gate here. This is nice. He's going to put up a gate and delete these walls so that Fiege can go in. And um, maybe Fire won't see it coming. Because these knights at the back are a bit of a distraction. Goku doesn't have plus two defense yet. So like I say, Fiege with the better upgrades at the moment. Looking good. With a solid 46 fills. Um, Castle coming up for Fire though. And... This is better than last time on the Arabia game. The castle for fire will go up. Thankfully, it went up fast enough. That's going to be pushing Fiege away a little bit. And Fiege is now going to be up against Conquistadors. This is what fire needs as the, the Spanish, right? So what he needs is the flank there. Uh, the Spanish player, obviously, for the Brazil B team is in the south. And he is absolutely fine uh, for now. He's on the way up to the castle age a little bit later. He is going to be the slowest of the castle. And actually, you know, Brazil A, in terms of development, are ahead. Brazil B don't have uh, their players in the castle age yet, while Brazil A are in the castle age across the board. So this is where Brazil A could start to make back some ground. Big fight coming in now. VH does have the uh, upgrade advantage, and it seems like he's got the numbers on Goku as well, bringing in three more knights here. He might be able to win that fight. Goku is still not upgrading plus two defense. He is doing plus one attack though, as it is cheaper and will have the same effect when fighting against knights, knights on knights. But um, Fiege doing a good job. 15 kills, 13 deaths is roughly even. He's going to run away now. And obviously Goku has the defender's advantage, so he can't stick around forever. Otherwise Goku will overwhelm him at some point. Fiege adding that second stable eventually as well. But, um, yeah, the problem for Dugao is that he's still got a hole in his wall. Uh, obviously, Riot's coming in with some camels. whoop de doo Not going to be able to do much with them. Raiding-wise, anyway. He will be able to take on the fight versus the Knights, of course. But, yeah, Dugao really needs to wall this up at some point here. It's going to be pretty tough to close it, though. Alive's coming in with the hill. Crossbow's on the hill there. Riot is there as well with the camels. It's a good fight for these guys. But um, I think they've just not got the numbers on their side. And obviously, Dugout, defender's advantage. It's always something to keep in mind. And they should be able to push this back quite comfortably, I think. There you go. And maybe now, Dugout, pay attention. Bring a villager over. Complete the wall. Stop the raids. The wall's coming up very nicely for Brazil B in the south. Look at these walls. Yeah, following all the way along. Um, Miguel's like, nah, not bothered about walls. Not interested. I'm just going to be super aggressive and we'll win the game that way, boys. But um, obviously Stark taking the precaution. He's got some big walls up. And uh, meeting up with Fiege, who's walled across as well. So Fiege even going camels now too. And I think that's a sign that Brazil B might be shaky a little bit here. Obviously, Fire's got a lot of Conquistadors now, and if Fire goes off on the Conquistadors, 
it's going to be really difficult to contest that at the moment. What do what do they have to deal with the conks at this stage? I, mean, I think the best thing to do is get Stark to the castle age and get him on conquistadors as well. But Stark's adding in more TCs right now. Uh, obviously, Fire's TCs are up as well at the back here. A little bit later in development, but Fire's conquistadors are going to hit hard. He's got a good number of them out already. No bloodlines. But with a bit of nice micro, with a little bit of back and forth, it's a bit of uh, sort of attack, retreat, attack, retreat kind of thing. Fire will blast a lot of knights today. That's what his goal is going to be. VH though with the camels, and I think maybe, you know, the camels might have something to do with this as well. Um, VH seems a lot of conks coming out. Obviously, the camels are a little cheaper than knights. They have the same health. They have less armor. But they do also have the attack bonus versus the conquistadors if they can catch them. Right now, another fight in the north. Conquistadors coming in. Not really any micro from fire there. This is the kind of fight Fiege would like to take. But um, the, the knights from Goku and defense as well are more, and more than enough to repel Brazil B once more. Brazil B are falling behind a little bit now as more and more and more camels start coming out for Fiege. Interesting choice for him to go so heavy on the camels here. Riot, if you look at Riot, he's also pretty heavy on camels as well. It's one of those things, like once one player makes so many camels, it's kind of dumb to keep making knights into that. Because they're just going to win like every fight you take in, in you know, sort of uh, knight versus camel fight. So then you're kind of forced, well if he's making camels, I guess I'll make camels. <laughs> Eventually everyone's just making camels. Camels all the way down. But no, Goku is on the way up to the Imperial Age now. As um, Miguel comes in, uh, a really good time to raid actually. Really good time to raid. Killing a few Vils off. And uh, Goku's got less villagers than Miguel now. Who is the other Hun player who's currently doing the raiding in his economy. But yeah, Goku is um, up to four stables, five stables. You know that when he gets to the Imperial Age, he's going straight into Cavalier. We've seen it many times. But um, yeah, VH has got a lot of camels, man. <laughs> and even if Goku goes like into Cavalier right now, I don't think he's got... He's, he's only got like 20 knights. VH has got 27 camels. Do you really want to fight that still? Do you? Would you really want to take that fight? So, I don't know. I mean, VH... Probably going to stall Goku a little bit with the camels here, I feel. At the same time, Stark's going up to the Imperial Age as well. Goku's going to have a big lead on him. He's going to be about two minutes faster to the Imperial Age. Goku will be ahead of Stark by two minutes, I mean. Um, Stark, obviously going to go for Paladins as well. He's the other Paladin Civ. And the unknown quantity, really, is the Conquistador here. I mean, is Fire going to be able to utilize these well? Right now, Fire has only killed 18 units. He's lost 22. And if you remember back to Bedouins earlier on, when we had that Bedouins game in the last series I cast, um, what was it? It was Argentina versus... No. No, it was earlier today. It was the... Yeah, Argentina versus Vietnam. Sorry, it was that. Um, in that series I cast earlier on, we saw that the, the player with the Conquistadors had a ton of kills because he was using them to raid and he was really using them well. Uh, we got a bit of a, a, a unpause here. The game's sort of going up all over the place in speed. But uh, VH taking the fight with his camels here, but he's 2v1. He's going to have to back away. Those Conquistadors are scary, man. And Fiege just losing about 10 units right there in an instant. I don't know. That, the question, the camels are a questionable thing. They don't really serve much purpose other than taking the fights versus the knights and the uh, and the conks. But yeah, 2v1 is never going to win that. On the left side, the crossbows from Alive into Dugao's base as well here. Miguel's coming over with some knights, and it's Riot on this side making the camels. These guys are loving it. Can't see us winning that. Gonna have to ult G. Riot's, Riot's being baited into the TC. 
so that the TC can kill the camels because that's probably the most effective way of doing it. Look at that. They're going down so quickly to the TC fire. Camels, the ships of the desert, the ships of AOC taking all that bonus damage. But yeah, I mean, the fire here is starting to roam a bit more with the Conquistadors, but it's not really hit anybody at their bases. It's not really gone into anyone's base and done any damage. And that's in part due to the Team B's, uh, Brazil B's team wall, which has come up, which is very, very nice. Very pretty team wall. VH going into castles. And I think this is the big sort of, a big tell, really. I mean, Fiege right now, he's taking the fight here. Camels versus Cavalier versus Conquistadors. And he is spamming those camels, man. He is not stopping for anybody. And as I said, even with Cavalier, do you want to take that fight? And that right there is the answer to that question. Uh-uh. Goku losing all of his Cavalier to Castle Age Camels. Even the Conquistadors going down. And they sat there and took that. And Fiege was like, yes, come to daddy. Mm-mm, give me some of that. Three kills, tasty. Fiege with 70 kills, 51 losses right now. Miguel, 115 kills, 64 losses. Miguel has definitely been more active around the map raiding. And that's something that, again, the Brazil A team haven't seemed to do very much. It's always the Brazil B team that are like the, the raiders, the aggressors. Brazil A, when they do sort of push, they come up against a brick wall that is this team wall of Brazil B. Yeah, Fiege's camel is looking very good. But the, the thing I was going to say before is that, you know, Fiege is going up to the Imperial Age now. Um, obviously, he's spamming camels, but this to me says that he wants to switch towards um, maybe some Chuko Nu. I mean, he's probably going to do heavy camel because he has so many. So it, it just makes it justified in doing that. Um, oh, look. Goku wants to go for round two. VH with a quick wall here. It's like, right, get the camels in, boys. We've got some cavalier at the gates. Obviously, he's walled it up. There's not a hole today. And VH almost has him trapped. There's been quite a few pauses in this game, so that's why it keeps freezing. The players keep pausing for whatever reason. And he's like, damn, Goku. Thank you again for the feed. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty Cavalier for breakfast Goku is doing Paladin though So I mean like I say It's more like a stalling thing He's going to keep Goku's Cavalier numbers low He's going to keep Goku's Cavalier uh, fighting his camels Goku's like stubbornly fighting this still Bear in mind that the Cavalier are more expensive than the camels as well So not only is he losing the fight But he's losing economically in this and, uh, yeah, I mean, Fiege is 82 kills to 66 losses. Goku is 69 kills to 74 losses. Plus, he's, his losses are costing him more. Paladin, it's not stopping Paladin, though. Paladin's still on the way. Miguel's getting Paladin as well. This left side was, I was a bit concerned for Dogao on this left side. Since Alive is, is still looking very good here, pushing in. Holy crap, Amoli. Look at those techs. There's so many research searches coming in. But yeah, heavy camel coming in for Fiege here. We can say the same for Riot. Lots of heavy camels coming in for him too. But there you go. Miguel, active around the map once again. Like I was saying before, the activity from Miguel has been great. He's been raiding consistently. He's got double as many kills as losses, which means he's around the map. He's killing villagers. Goku now at 99 vils. He's got 99 problems. And his vils ain't one. Um, and obviously Miguel with 127 is a little bit later to get Paladin. It's going to come in in just a tick. But he has been very active. It's now Goku's turn to, to push back. It is his turn now rolling through the palas. Goku better deal with this. And on the left side, Dugao. Dugao has been the weaker link here this whole game. He has been under a lot of pressure from Alive. And he's been supported by Riot as well. Miguel's coming in with the Paladins here to help. But he needs some help from Fiege to deal with the Paladins of Goku, which are now starting to raid his base. And that's a lot of Paladins coming in. Goku's finally 
Looking a bit healthier with his KD. Starting to kill some villagers in return. Goku is actually forcing some idle time on the Brazilian B team. And in the center of the map, Miguel's starting to... Um... Wait, that's Riot. Yeah, Riot's starting to, to move out with a castle. And why Miguel had a TC here, though? What's that about? Kind of ballsy move, I'll be honest. And the raiding's going to eventually get cleaned up. Camel's coming over from Fiege now. On the right side, though, Stark pushing into fire extremely well. And as much as Dugao is the weak link on the left side of the Brazilian B team, Fire is the weak link on, weak, weak link on the right side of the Brazilian A team. Riot's coming in with some Mangadai to help out, though. And yeah, it's looking a little bit dicey for, for uh, Fire. Only 28 military on the map. And I don't know where they are. They're kind of spread out around the place here. The Grey Paladins from Goku still trying to raid. Still keeping VH chasing, which is very good. Brazil A, um, this is probably their best game so far, I think. Best opportunity so far, M maybe, to take it. Good fight here. Really good fight. They're going to take down all of the Trebs from Dugao. They're going to plow on through with the Camels. Dugao wants to get the Mangadai out, but look at the difference between the Mongol players here. Dugao doesn't have Elite Mangadai. Doesn't have plus two defense. And then you've got uh, Riot with plus four, plus four, and Elite. So, Brazil A actually um, poised to take the game. But they've got to do a bit more damage yet. Obviously, Fire's looking a bit down and out. Start coming forward with the Bombard Towers. Just being a nuisance. I do like it. Mass spam of Halbs, though. Not too good against the Mangadai, which are now starting to come in. On the left side, Fiege going to bring the Camels forward. That's right. Run your, your Camels into my castle, so he's alive. But uh, yeah, alive. Going to keep his castle up for now. Taking down the castle of Dugao. Dugao will try and get the Rams on after losing all of his Trebs. He doesn't want to risk losing all that again. But uh, unfortunately for Dugao, the repairs are there. Alive's going to be... Uh, Continuing this push. Dugao's having to sort of... Well, I don't even know where he's going right now. He needs to reboom a bit more. Dugao's on just... 110 villas. What? How does Dugao have 110 villagers right now? Like, how is that even possible? Where are they? Are they hiding? He has a tiny economy. He has like... These are houses. Where are his villagers? Is, is this it? Just that? I don't know. That's 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 really, um, I guess, misleading. You look at the, the map and you look at his like village account. It just doesn't seem to add up. He's got more villagers than Miguel. <laughs> How is that even possible? I guess uh, there's a lot of raiding on Miguel. But yeah, I mean, oh, that's, that's really, really surprising, to be honest. Anyway, on the right side, Stark's still trying to be annoying, I guess. Um, but the Elite Mangalai from Riot really saving the day. Able to deal with the siege very well. Able to take down the Halbs very easily. And up on the north side, this is where, I don't know, I feel like the Mayan player is going to do a little better. The Mayan player is, like, so much more further ahead than the, the Chinese player at this stage. You've got masses of plumed archers. And the Chinese player right now, is he's not even made a switch into Chuko Nu. He's just doing camels. And that is not a fight you want to take, really. Those camels just melting under the arrow fire from the Mangadai and the, the plumed archers here. I mean, we need to start seeing some onagers coming out, perhaps. But the Siege Onager Civ, the, uh, um, sorry, the, the, uh, the Mongols, Dugao, is on the back foot. There's no real way for Dugao to go for the Onager here. He's got to go for the Mangadai. Got to try and recover. And Brazil are, are definitely looking good here. They're definitely doing it. They've got some good momentum on this left side, and I'd say they were pushing more effectively on the left side than Brazil B is pushing on the right. 
However, it's not over until it's over, and obviously Degao's going to try and stall out as much as possible, but these camels for Fiege, at this stage of the game, I feel like they're just useless. Like, they can't even make it, really, to the front line here before they're all dead. And they'll get in there with, like, two or three, and then they'll go down. But Fiege is not going to get good trades here, I feel. I think he needs to... He needs to switch. He's persistent, though. I feel like um, Chuko knew at this stage are uh, probably a better choice still. The problem is Chuko are a lot slower and he doesn't really have any castles up. He's got like one castle. He can't he can't transition to that. He would need to make more castles. Fiege doesn't have any stones, so has to keep making camels. However, Miguel's here as well, and together with Miguel, Mangadai from Dugao and the camels from Fiege, they can start to push this back. And that's exactly what they needed to do. A good push together, three of them, waiting for the right time. And, you know, I mean, the camels aren't terrible. They just have to get the right fights. You know, if, if he can fight alongside his teammates, then the camels are going to be a lot more effective. But if he's running them in and he's just running them into a wall of archers, they're just going to get cut down before they even arrive. So... Brazil B, Stark on the right side. So many Bombard Towers. And Goku's just somehow, for some reason, attracted to this. Fires here with some Siege Rams. And those Bombard Towers do hit hard, but they may go down. But the thing is, Stark has been fighting versus Goku. He's been fighting versus Fire. He's been fighting versus the Mangadai of Riot on this right-hand side for a long time. And he's done that alone. He's not really had any backup from his teammates, you know? His teammates have all been focused on dealing with this on the left. And now they're all coming over to the right. You've got uh, Miguel coming down with his paladins. Dugao coming over with his Mangadai as well. And they're like, yeah, guys, uh, come help me out. I've got some Bombard Towers over here that need some, need some bailout. And so they're going to try and bail Stark out. At what cost? At the cost of an ever-advancing left flank. Riot all over the place right now. And I think I think Riot's doing really well this game. He, um... This is the big difference. Riot went camels, right? Riot went heavy into camels, just like VH. But Riot can switch into Mangadai. And, okay... VH could switch into Chuko Nu, but they're not anywhere near as fast, and that's a problem. They're more of a static unit. You put them there, and then you just sort of leave them there and push with them slowly. Obviously, the camels, you, they're quick, so you can move around the map with them. You can um, sort of react quickly and change sides and take more advantageous fights. But I know what I would rather have. I'd rather have 40 Mangadai than 100 camels, you know? It's just a better unit, and that's now what the Tyrant, uh, sorry, what? <laughs> well, it's Tyrant Riot, but uh, that's what the Brazilian A team have in their arsenal. They have those Magadai. It's super important. Obviously, the, the Camels from Fiege rarely getting an opportunity, really. He's running them in and looking for fights, but a lot of the time he's fighting under a castle or... He's fighting in front of a wall of Mangadai, and it's just never a good opportunity to take it. Um, but yeah, obviously, Dugao is the Mongol player on their side, so that role is already taken. I just feel like maybe the Chinese here not filling their potential. <laughs> Uh, the Camel Bible Thump. Make them great again. Fortunately, the HD edition did make camels great again with the introduction of the Imperial Camel. With the um, reduction of damage from buildings. Um, Dyer's Das Party Fast in the chat says, Is every arrow the Chukunu shoots dealing with the damage that is displayed? Nope. It does not. But I did make a video about that on YouTube. 
Just search Chuko New Zero Empires on YouTube and I made it like a 10 minute, 15 minute video explaining how it works. It's one of the most complex units in the game, the Chuko New. Um, it's really fascinating how it works and I explain in detail how that works on YouTube. Um, it's just, if you just search Zero Empires Chuko New in YouTube and it's the video with like 100,000 views or something and check it out, it's, it's worth a watch. I can't believe this right side. Fire is... Still losing ground. These Bombard Towers from Stark didn't die. He kept them alive. He, he's just continuing to hold his ground over there. And uh, if Brazil B end up taking this game as well, that would just be monumental. I noticed that Fia just had a lot of idle units here for a long time, as is Miguel. They need to group their armies up and use their military. But I know it's so easy to lose track of units. There's a lot of idle units. Look, Miguel here. Has he fallen asleep? Look at his military map. Units here. Units here. Units here. Units here. Units here. Just idle. Everywhere. All over the map. He needs to group them together. He needs to... Yeah, look. They're Xing them out now. Stark's paying attention. He's Xing the map. He's like, wake up, guys. You get, get your army together. Get your ass in gear. Action, action, battle stations. They've been idle for a long time. And I guess there's a little bit of fatigue coming in. I mean, they've been playing for many hours now and it can be quite tiring. Battle stations. Um, yeah, Goku coming in once again to help this right flank fire. Not really adding much. A few halves, but importantly, a lot of trebs at the back. His teammates giving him the time to get the trebs up, start taking the towers down. While on the left side, I want to say the left side's going to be... Yeah, a massive fight. Mm -hmm. Miguel's paladins being eaten for breakfast. But uh, the Dogout Mangadai are up to full strength now as well, and it did take him a while. It really took Dogout a long time, but the big dog coming through with the Mangadai now as well, and... That may be the push right there. It ends today, says Degal. Him and Miguel will overwhelm this. And alive. Gonna have to fall back with those plumed archers. More Mangadai coming up, but how is Degal doing this? Where is Degal's economy? Where is his base? He has. Degal has 94 villagers. They're just like camouflaged. That. <laughs> Uh, dug out. I don't know. I don't know. His villages are somewhere. I, I'm looking at this. It's just houses here. Look at the minimap. Houses here. Oh, there you go. There's his villas. It's so... So spread out all over the place. Anyway, it's not really important where his villages are. You know what I mean. It's just a bit of, uh... A bit of an entertaining thing. Because it's like... He's got no eco, but he has. On the right side, the camels from the age coming on through. And if Goku wants to sit and take the fight, the age will honor that. And then he will fall flat off of his camel as he runs into the TC. It's always the danger. Oh, sorry, the, the castle. It's always the danger. Stark now coming out with the bombard cannons. A great unit choice here for Stark. He's going to be able to take down the Trebs. And on this right side, Brazil B are pushing back. I can't believe this. Brazil B. They've rallied their troops together. They've finally got all of their units in one location. They've stopped idling their units around the map. And they bought everything to fight. Absolutely everything to fight. VH fighting under this castle doesn't care. The castle's going down. On the left side... Dogao, as I said, up to full strength now with the Mangadai. Backed up by Miguel's Paladins and what a wombo combo they've got going over there. And this is the pushback now. This is where Brazil B starts to turn it once again. That left flank has been so back and forth. I mean, this whole area has just been contested for a good 30 minutes of this game. And now, as I say, the pushback has begun on both sides. Brazil B rallying, looking strong as Dugao completes that Siege Onager tech. 
Of course, the trade is worth looking at. Both teams have got a lot of trade, but Brazil B have more. Brazil B have a lot more trade. Only 22 carts on Alive, 36 on Fire. And everybody on the Brazil team has um, over 40. Most have 50 to 70. Or 60 or 70. So a lot more trade for the B team. A lot more gold in the coffers. What a fight on this right side. This is brutal. Those Bombard Towers from Stark are beautiful. Stark here hasn't got um, like an amazing KD. The KD is all the gals. But bear in mind, those Bombard Towers offer so much to this fight. Not only do they do damage, like a lot of damage, but they also prevent the pushback. It's like um, a Bodkin Arrow, you know? Once it goes in, you can't, you know, when you get it out, you take more damage. And Stark's just coming in, building more and more and more. And even if they lose all their military here, the Brazil A team have to take care of all these Bombard Towers. And they can't do that. Not easily, not quickly. And that gives Brazil B time to rally the troops together. And it gives them time to recover from a loss on this right flank. Oh. And on the left flank, you've got a problem. The first point in this game, at 1 hour 8 minutes. The trade line will be raided. And that's Mangadai in the trade line. Paladin's in the trade line. And that's it. Brazil A are calling it right there. Unbelievable showing from Brazil B. Don't know what Fiege is saying. Bolsonaro 2018. <laughs> but um, Brazil B, man. 4 and 0 oh over Brazil A. I think they got the letters the wrong way around because Brazil B didn't drop a single match. It is a clean sweep. And the first and only clean sweep in the uh, in the knockout stage of the event either as well. Really, really good performance from Brazil B. And I don't know how they do this, but every time they've got their back against the wall,